Let's be honest, I feel like such a failure. I've tried to lose weight more times than I can count. Sometimes I lose, sometimes I don't. But one thing is for certain, I can always gain. Why is it so hard to lose weight? That's a great question. And I just want to start by thanking you for coming in and taking this very important step. Many patients don't consult their healthcare providers for weight loss. Instead, because of the number of times they've gained weight and lost it again, they simply just give up. In fact, when we look at this, losing weight and keeping it off is one of the hardest things we do as human beings. Many of the pathways that control appetite, hunger, and really regulate the weight that we maintain evolved in an era of undernutrition. So with this, our body is designed to hold on to every pound that it can. And it fights us every step of the way as we're trying to lose weight. Now on top of this, we add our genetic makeup, the medications we're on, our general health, the environment around us. All of this comes together to make weight loss even that much harder. That's helpful to understand. But I've tried so many diet and weight loss programs over the years. I even hired a personal trainer at one point, and I'm still overweight. How is Mayo's approach different? Well, we'll take a, a different approach, basically by saying that we need to introduce tools to help you be successful to a diet and a physical activity program. And the reason why we believe that tools are essential for weight loss is because your body usually adapts to a weight loss program if it's only based on a diet and an exercise program. There are many things in your body that makes you difficult to sustain that weight loss. And more importantly, it makes it difficult to fight back what your body is designed to do. Your body is designed to save energy. So if we don't introduce a tool to help us with that diet program and that exercise program, usually people tend to feel very frustrated with not eating enough calories. They feel a lot of hungry and appetite and moody and so on. Um, so they usually fail their diet. But it's not because the patient doesn't lack motivation or doesn't want to lose weight. It's usually because your body is fighting against us. So this is where we introduce the tools. We have three tools that are the essentials. We have medications, endoscopic procedures, and we have surgery. You know, I really haven't heard much about endoscopic procedures before. What are they exactly? So endoscopic procedures are the new kits on the block for weight loss tools to help us with a diet and exercise program. They are usually better than medications, and sometimes they can be as good as bariatric surgery. The advantages of an endoscopic procedure is that it's an outpatient procedure, so no need to stay overnight. There's no scars like in surgery. All of this is done by endoscopy. They are usually safer with less complications. Patients tolerate this better. And usually the way that they work is by helping the patient by either decreasing their, their hungry and appetite levels by making you feel full, by either producing an occupying space in the stomach, like in the example with the balloons, or in the example of the sleeve, by making you feel full by reducing the size of your stomach. That sounds like an interesting alternative. Can you provide more information about these endoscopic procedures? Sure. Let's start by discussing the intragastric balloon procedure, which is a procedure that has been recently approved by the FDA for the management of obesity. Basically, it's an endoscopic procedure. That means it's done in an endoscopy unit as an outpatient using the endoscope. The endoscope is a tube that has a camera on its tip that allow us to insert, to go from the mouth and visualize the esophagus and the stomach. Once we visualize the esophagus and the stomach, we place, we guide the balloon, which becomes deflated into the stomach. Once we're happy with the position within the stomach, we then insufflate the balloon with about 650 ml of a salt solution called saline. The fully insufflated balloon is about the size of a grapefruit and sits in the stomach doing two things. One, it makes you feel full when you're fasting because there's something sitting in your stomach. And the other thing, once you eat a healthy meal, it will allow you to feel full longer with a healthy meal because it delays the rate by which food is emptying out of the stomach. So the balloon is designed to, sit, to stay in the stomach for six months because we know that this is the duration where it's safe to keep this balloon in. After six months, you come back 
with this, with, to the same endoscopy unit as the balloon was placed. And with the aid of the same endoscope, we go inside the stomach again from your mouth, deflate the balloon, and then retrieve it out of your mouth. As far as the side effects of the, of the balloon, they're rare. In the first week, it's expected that people have some abdominal cramps and some nausea, which, which we call accommodative symptoms. That means your stomach is adjusting to the balloon. We manage these usually with anti-nausea medications and pain medication, and the vast majority of these symptoms resolve within the first week. More serious side effects are very rare after the balloon, but they could include ulcerations of the stomach, tears in the stomach or the esophagus, and obstruction of the small intestines, but these side effects are very rare. The balloon is a temporary tool that will allow you to lose significant amount of weight. You might be asking me how much weight do I expect to lose with the balloon and it's usually the average weight loss has been about 13 uh, percent of the total body weight. Uh, the key for the balloon procedure, it, it enables you to adopt a healthier lifestyle and with, uh, with that tool and with the aid of uh, our team in nutrition and psychology, we will give you a 12-month program to supplement the balloon in order to allow you to adopt a healthier lifestyle that would allow you to maintain the weight loss for the longer term after the balloon. Let's talk about a new procedure called endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty. With this procedure, basically we're decreasing the size of your stomach by suturing it from inside to the size of a banana. So we're taking the stomach, which is the size, it's a big sack, and reducing it to a size of a banana. How we do this? We do this endoscopically through the aid of an endoscope. Basically, it's a long camera that goes from your mouth and allows us to do an intervention inside of your stomach. On top of this long camera, we have a sewing machine that allows us to take your stomach and invaginate it on itself in order to reduce its, reduce its capacity by about 80%. So once this procedure is done, the stomach is smaller in size, so it only could accommodate smaller meals but also the rate by which the meal empties from the stomach is decreased, so a smaller meal lasts for a much longer period of time, producing satiety for a long period of time. So a patient could follow a low caloric diet without feeling hungry all the time. This procedure is designed to be permanent. That means these sutures we do not remove. However, things could stretch in the long term, and if that were to happen, we could easily go back and reinforce or retighten things up with a, with a similar endoscopic procedure. Unlike surgical options, we're not removing any parts of the stomach. The stomach stays there, but we're just invaginating it on the, uh, from the insides. Therefore, the risks with these procedures are rare. There's some abdominal pain and nausea that happens within the first week or so, but most of these are managed with pain medication and nausea medications, and the vast majority resolve within the first week. More serious risks like bleeding, infection, or tears in the stomach are very unlikely. You might be asking, how much weight do I expect to lose with this procedure? And usually on average, people have lost about 18 to 20% of their total body weight loss at one year after this procedure. The key to the success of this procedure as to any other procedure is adopting a healthier lifestyle for the longer term. And then to allow you to do that, we'll have you participate in a lifestyle intervention program that we help you to learn how to adopt a healthier lifestyle in the, longer, in the longer term by meeting with our psychologist and nutritionist over the 12 months after this procedure is performed. So how do you decide which endoscopic procedure is right for me? At Mayo Clinic, we are pioneering uh, a new approach to obesity. Clearly, there's not one treatment that fits all, and we know that many things do not work for everyone. So, in the new generation of medicine, we need to individualize care to all of our patients. So we're bringing individualized therapy for obesity in which we can select what is the right patient for the right intervention or the right intervention for the right patient. So we are based on your own physiology and how your body works and certain people tend to have certain characteristics. We have been able to break them down into four major groups. People who have a problem with satiety and satiation, meaning they have difficulty feeling full. People who have a problem with increased appetite, so they might feel full normal, but they feel hungry sooner. People who might have a behavioral problem in which they're either emotionally eating or eating to cope with one of the stresses of life. And then we feel comfortable saying there might be other groups we don't know. 
But if we can identify your group, we may have a more specific treatment and we will improve your outcomes, minimizing the risks. Let's say I'm convinced that an endoscopic procedure is my best option. Why should I have this procedure done here at Mayo Clinic? I'm sure I could find a lower cost option elsewhere. Absolutely. When it comes to weight loss, you have many choices. But if we look closely at these options, you see that many centers develop expertise in just one aspect of weight loss. Some centers only focus on lifestyle changes, whereas other centers develop expertise in bariatric surgery. Mayo Clinic has always taken a comprehensive approach to healthcare. So with this in mind, we've developed clinical expertise that's combined with cutting edge research to create a team that consists of endocrinologists, dietitians, healthcare coaches, psychologists, gastroenterologists, and surgeons who will guide you through every facet of weight loss, starting from lifestyle changes, medications, endoscopic surgery procedures, and even bariatric surgery in itself. This team is also with you through your entire journey, giving you the best chance at losing weight and keeping it off. In most ways, it's comforting to know I'll be surrounded by a group of experts who can guide me through this process. But honestly, it concerns me that I have to spend time with a psychologist. Why is this necessary? You know, that's a common question of why would a psychologist be involved in a weight management team? And usually there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that for many people, it's not a knowledge deficit that's getting in the way of them being successful with managing weight. It's often about habits or behaviors. And many of us do things that we know are not good for us but we continue to do them anyway. And we can help you try to understand a little bit better what some of the triggers are for those behaviors, some of the consequences, and help you really make those behavior changes more in the long term. Also, a lot of people struggle with maintaining motivation over the long term to eat healthy or to be more active. And so psychologists can really help you tap into what motivates you to try to stay healthy. Additionally, some people struggle with stress or depression or addiction to alcohol or tobacco that can interfere with their ability to be successful. And a psychologist can re really help you address and treat those things so that you can be more successful in the long term. And so really the foundation of any weight loss medication or procedure really comes to making lifestyle change. And often that comes down to behavior. And that's where psychologists can sometimes be helpful. I understand that I need to make changes to my diet and lifestyle, and I'm totally on board with that. But if I have an endoscopic procedure, am I actually going to be able to eat anything? Of course you will. But an endoscopic procedure causes changes in how your body handles food and nutrients, which require changes on your part too. For example, initially, it's important to have a liquid diet to help with healing. Longer term, we want to work with you to optimize your nutrition intake. We'll also work with you to identify and correct eating habits that can sabotage weight loss efforts. And it will be important for you to increase your daily activity. We'll also provide you with information on foods and eating patterns that can help you feel full while lowering your calorie intake. And we'll be here along the way to help provide some coaching and support as you progress on your weight loss journey.